Hi there guys, so there is a question that is asked quite frequently and it is, why do skinny guys punch so hard? They are skinny, they have very little muscle, yet they punch like a freaking mule. Why is that? Then you have some guys who are extremely muscular who don't punch hard enough to break an eggshell. Well, the reason why a skinny guy can punch so hard is it's not just about the muscle tone, it's about the tendons as well and the fast twitch muscle fibers. And it's not just about the weight of the guy or woman who is throwing the punch, it's about the torque on the punch as well, because our bodies work in torque, not in weight. If you think about it, if you lift, say, 100 kilos in a deadlift quite comfortably, if you then go and attach resistance bands to the weight, to the bar, then it will make it so much more difficult to lift that weight. But you haven't added more weight, you've just made the weight that you're lifting so much harder to lift. And that means your body works in torque, not in weight, because obviously, you can lift the 100 kilos quite comfortably when it is just in a normal deadlift. You add resistance bands and it makes it so much more difficult. So ultimately that proves that our bodies work in torque, not in weight. And it's the same with punching power. Therefore, it's not about the weight behind the punch, but it's about the torque on the punch. Now also the key to throwing power shots is heavily dependent on your stance and how you position yourself in the ring and your balance. If you don't have good balance, if you don't position yourself correctly, then you will not get the power in your punches. You think if someone stands up vertical and throws a punch, just from a vertical standpoint, they won't get as much power on it if they go into a boxing stance and twist their hips when they throw the punch. If they stand vertical upright, there is no way there's going to be enough power in the punch to cause any damage. Whereas if you're in the boxing stance, you balance yourself correctly and turn your hips into the shots, then that will get so much more power into the shots. So as I said, it's not just about how much muscle you have. It's not just about how big you are, how heavy you are. It's about how you throw the punch. It's about technique. And that is something that some fighters just intuitively grasp and other fighters just have to work hard at it until they get more power into their shots. Now, obviously, there are some fighters who just don't have many knockouts, who just don't punch hard enough to hurt their opponent. And that doesn't necessarily mean they don't punch hard. It means that maybe their technique isn't the same as a guy who does punch harder. Take Tyson Fury for instance, he's not considered a big puncher. Then take Dillian White for instance, who is considered a bigger puncher than Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury actually has a bigger knockout ratio than Dillian White, even though you would not expect it because you see Dillian White having them show real knockouts one shot and their opponent is asleep. So obviously there is a reason why Dillian White punches harder or seems to punch harder than Tyson Fury because if you look at Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder you would think that okay this guy can punch but it's only because Tyson Fury has been learning the technique of throwing powerful shots before he was stopping his opponents through accumulation of punches and they just couldn't deal with it anymore because Tyson Fury is just so big and so heavy so he just wore them down and they got exhausted and ultimately they just could not continue after Tyson Fury was just coming forward and landing shot after shot and often a ref would jump in and save the other fighter whereas Dillian White his knockouts are more clean one shot and that's it or one or two shots and that's it they are more powerful and more devastating it seems but as I said Tyson Fury is now working on that style turning his hand over and the technique of putting power into his shots before they were scoring blows they were about appeasing the judges making sure that the shots he throws are scoring blows. So the judges give that round to Tyson Fury because he landed the more shots. Doesn't matter how much power were in the shots, it's about the scoring blows. That is what Tyson Fury done for a majority of his career. But against Deontay Wilder, he'd done something completely different. He went in there looking for a knockout to land those big heavy shots. And look at what he'd done. He got the knockout and that was because he was working on his technique, working on his balance. Because if you look at Tyson Fury previously, before the Deontay Wilder fight, he's in the position to be taking punches and riding them. So that takes the power out of the shot. So Tyson Fury is in that stance, in a defensive stance. So he's never going to get much power into his shots by being on the back foot and allowing the other fighter to come to him. Whereas when he flips that, and goes after the other fighter, his balance completely changes. His weight is on his back foot and he transfers that to his front foot when he throws his shots and that gets the power into the shots. Also turning your hips as well and turning that hand over. That is very important. If you don't turn your hand over, you do not get the power into the shots. Then let's look at Tyson Fury's opponent, Deontay Wilder, the guy who is considered the biggest punching heavyweight in history. Yet he weighs in just above the cruiserweight limit. He's a skinny guy, yet he has devastating punching power. How is that? Again, it's about the balance and about the torque on the punches, not about the weight behind it or anything like that. It's about the torque and how you land the punch. 
Deontay Wilder is not a gifted boxer, but he is a gifted puncher. That is one thing that works in Deontay Wilder's favor. And the reason why he is so good at that is because if you watch him, how he distributes his weight when he throws the punch from the back foot to the front foot, turning that hand over. Also, what Deontay Wilder does so well is he steps back into the space, allows the opponent to come forward. As soon as they come forward, lift their front foot and give up their balance and positioning. That is when Deontay Wilder throws his shot. So landing powerful shots isn't just about what you're doing, it's about what your opponent does as well and making them do something you want them to do. As I said, like Deontay Wilder does, step back into the space, allow the opponent to come forward. As soon as they do come forward, he lets loose then. And that is when the punch is more devastating than it would be if they were on the back foot ready to take a punch. So guys, as you can see, there are so many different reasons why a big puncher can be a big puncher, yet be a skinny guy or a skinny woman. Because it's not just about that, it's about the tendons as well. It's about balance, it's about positioning and what your opponent is doing as well. Sometimes having more muscle and more weight can make your punch power less effective. Because of lactic acid and they use so much more oxygen to keep fueled than they would if you had smaller muscles. Also, there will be more power in your shots if you throw loose. Deontay Wilder is a fighter who throws his punches loose. Also, look at George Groves. He's not considered a massive puncher, but he is. He's a very, very powerful puncher. And the reason he is, is because he throws his punches loose. If he tenses up, that takes a lot more power out of the shot. It's about relaxing and having your positioning making sure you distribute the weight properly, having the right balance and positioning, and that gets the power into the shots. So having a lot of muscles and a lot of weight doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to be a big puncher. Another active fighter we can talk about who is very powerful, but not the best boxer in the world like Deontay Wilder is Chris Eubank Jr. Obviously he's improving his boxing game, but he does punch extremely hard. And again, he's not necessarily the biggest guy. He's not necessarily the most muscular guy, but he does punch hard. And often in fights, he's the power puncher in there. He moved up to super middleweight, where his normal weight is middleweight. That is his natural weight. But he moved up to 168 pounds, yet he was still the puncher in fights. He was still the stronger guy and the guy who was more devastating. George Groves had to really box him to beat him. If he stood there in the trenches, then it could have been bad for George Groves. And George Groves was the natural super middleweight, yet he still had to control Eubank by using his boxing skills. He could not stand there and fight with him. Also, Carl Froch. He was never the most muscular guy, never the big guy. He was tall, he was rangy, but he wasn't really that muscular. He would weigh in at 168, the super middleweight limit. He would go into the fight about 172. Most fighters would rehydrate to say 180, 185, but Carl Froch never went much above that super middleweight limit. So he wasn't the heaviest guy. He wasn't the most muscular, but still, he was a big puncher. And again, the logical explanation is that it's about your tendons, it's not just about your muscles, it's also about the fast twitch muscle fibers, also it's about your balance, your positioning, and not loading up with your punches, not being tense and throwing loose. A lot of the time, muscular guys will tense up, they are very tight, and that means that they are using up a lot of oxygen by being that way. Also, lactic acid will kick in a lot quicker for someone who has more muscle than someone who is skinnier, meaning that they will get tired quicker in fights, losing their positioning meaning they will no longer be in the boxing stance. You will often see them walking in the ring, their feet are closer together than they should be. That means there is a lot of power that is surrendered from their punches because they are not in the correct stance to be throwing powerful shots. They are not distributing their weight correctly and their balance isn't there. That means that the power won't be in the punches. And not only that, it's about technique as well. If you look at UFC fighters who throw their shots, they throw their shots more like glancing blows. You don't see them turning their hand over you imagine if a boxer was throwing punches with those small gloves, it would be so devastating because they punch a lot harder than UFC fighters. One UFC fighter who was a heavyweight said that he sparred with a super middleweight boxer in UFC and he said that super middleweight boxer punched harder than anyone else who had hit him. A super middleweight from boxing, yet he was a heavyweight in UFC. So that just goes to show that it's about technique, turning your hips, your balance, your positioning, getting the weight on the shots and twisting your hand over. That is what gets the power into the shots. And some boxers are just more gifted at that than others. And that is why they get so much more power into their shots. But guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Why do skinny guys punch so hard? And why do muscular guys often not punch so hard? There are cases where there are muscular guys who do punch very hard, but ultimately it's quite often that skinny guys are the ones who are the punchers in there. And that can be surprising, but there are reasons for that many reasons for that in fact but anyway guys 
What are your thoughts on this? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Take a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Thanks, guys.